Hello, this is Anthony Manning, and welcome to My Journey to Kent. My traveller this time is Laura Oswald from Germany, who studied psychology with us through the Erasmus Exchange Scheme, and who was also a very active cellist and singer through music at Kent. So good afternoon, Laura. Nice of you to join us today. Yeah, good afternoon. I wondered if we could start by getting you to tell us a little bit about where you call home. Yeah, of course. So um, I'm from Germany and uh, I grew up in Emmendingen. That's a small town near Freiburg, near the Black Forest. Um, but for a bit more than two years now, I live in Würzburg and study there. And it's a very beautiful town in Franconia with lots of students. And yeah, I'm happy to live there. Brilliant. And so uh, we're talking to you today because you have a connection with the University of Kent and you studied with us um, during the last academic year. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, of course. So um, last year I did two terms in Kent um, with the Erasmus programme. And yeah, I'm very happy I could join the University of Kent actually um, because it had a very interesting range of modules in psychology. So yeah, I'm studying psychology and um, yeah, also what was very, very nice for me there was the music department because I love music and make a lot of music and Kent was a very good place for that, yeah. <laughs> so can you tell us more about your music and how you became involved with that and how you um, worked with us at Kent in that way? Yeah, of course. So um, I'm, I play the cello and the recorder and I sing. Um, and music has, I think, always been a big part of my life. And so when I knew I went abroad for studying, I bring my cello with me and I wanted to get involved there as well. Um, so it's easy to bring your cello with you. Yeah, um, I was lucky in the beginning because my parents brought me to Kent. Um, but yeah, I also drove with the Eurostar two times and had to buy an extra ticket. So yeah, it's always a bit of an adventure actually to travel with my cello, but <laughs> it's Absolutely. it's always worth it, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And I think really from the start, I joined the symphonic orchestra and um, the Sicilian choir and also the string symphonia, which is like a smaller string ensemble. And over the course of the two terms, I also had some smaller projects, smaller ensembles. Um, yeah, because I was really um, often in the Collier Ferguson building and um, made friends there. So then it was like, yeah, do you want to play with me in a um, piano trio or something? And um, yeah, that was very beautiful for me because I think music was really the thing that got me involved and like connected with the English people there um, very strong and very um, quickly. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a very powerful way to meet people from different backgrounds, studying different subjects and kind of build your network in a, in a different way to how you would do that in the classroom. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I, I found that like, often um, people you meet through music, um, there's always a, the connection because you have the same passion for music already and you do something extracurricular. So you won't talk about your studies and your essays, but it's really a shared passion that you do because you love it. And also, I mean, um, because you can't really study music at Kent, um, the people I met there were all doing that in their free time as extracurricular activities. So there was really this commitment and this um, joy in making music. And yeah, that was a wonderful atmosphere to get to know people. That's amazing. And so you, you joined us as an Erasmus student. Yeah, I did. Yeah. So did you also network with people who were also doing Erasmus from different countries? Yeah, yeah, I could also do that by, um, for example, there was a Erasmus Society and we did some um, some trips, some events, for example, a trip to Oxford, which was quite nice. And then there were some um, global hangouts events where not just Erasmus students, but students from international students from all over the world um, came and uh, 
we went to Leeds Castle or had pancakes together. So there were lots of opportunities actually to meet other international students. And that was very nice because, yeah, you never felt alone not being a native speaker or not being English because, yeah, the, the University of Kent is actually quite international, I guess. Yeah. Yes, we're, we're proud of that. Of course, we're all challenged a bit at the moment because obviously the UK is planning to leave the European Union very shortly. And at the moment, we're not sure what that means for the future of Erasmus. What would you say to the UK government in terms <laughs> of their commitment to continue with Erasmus? Yeah, I would definitely say that they um, should make an effort to try to keep this going, um, no matter how the other things will work out. But um, I think Erasmus is such a wonderful opportunity to get to know people, to have like enriching experiences. And also, I mean, I mean, to learn a lot also academically and your language skills. And I think the UK has great universities and um, it would be um, a pity if you can't participate in that anymore because of Brexit. So. Yeah, I hope that it continues somehow. <laughs> yes, you and me both. And I know um, colleagues and students are lobbying hard for that outcome to be achieved. Um, I suppose one question I'd like to ask you is how did you come across Kent in the first place? How did you find us? Yeah, um, I think, well, at first I was, I think, um, yeah, I, I was thinking I want to go abroad with my studying and maybe do an Erasmus semester because I've already heard a lot of people that were very happy with this experience. And um, I looked for universities in the UK because um, yeah, I wanted to study in English and I also have been to the UK before and really liked it. And um, I think what, what made me choose Kent was their choice of modules on the one hand. Um, uh, for example, I could study psychology and music, um, which was, of course, for me, a very, very interesting subject. And also the huge range of societies and support. And, um, you know, I really had the, uh, the impression that university takes care of the students and offers a lot besides just the lessons. And yeah, I mean, I already mentioned the music department. Of course, I also looked for a university where I can join music making. Mm. And yeah, that was definitely the case in Kent. Great, thank you. So we're talking to you today um, in the kind of context of a, of a journey through your studies and experiences in life. I wanted to ask you in your luggage, metaphorically or practically, what would you pack as essential items? Oh yeah, that's a good question. I think um, one thing I always have with me is a gratitude journal, actually. Um, I've done that for a few years now, just writing a few things down every evening, what went well this day, what, what made me smile, what am I grateful for? And um, as I'm trying to do this as consistently as possible, it's also nice to have it um, when you're traveling, of course, then, um, yeah, another thing maybe would be my headphones because I love listening to music, obviously, and, um, it can really help calming or boosting your mood or whatever you want to, you can get it from music actually. <laughs> um, so yeah. And I think more metaphorically speaking, openness, openness for new experiences, openness to, you know, you, ca you can't always plan a journey, you have to be flexible and open to the challenges and open to meet new people and um, yeah, try out new things. And yeah, I think that's how you get the most of your experience. Thank you. Those are good items for anyone to pack in their bag, I think. Great idea. I love the idea of the, the gratitude journal. We could all benefit from that, helping yeah, us definitely. focus on the positives. That's great. Mm -hmm. And my next question to you then is, you know, you've described your experiences so far and the different places you've studied and what you're working towards. Have you experienced any obstacles along the way? Yeah, I mean, of course, life is never just running smoothly. And um, 
One particular challenge for me, I guess, were the essays I had to write because um, here in Germany in the psychology degree is really mostly made up, made up from exams. Um, so I was just not used to write academically and also not in English, of course. And then, um, yeah, suddenly I had many deadlines and had to write multiple essays at a time. Um, so that was a bit hard, but um, I think it was really nice to have, for example, a student learning advisory service or um, I also did a language course in the beginning um, that also helped with academic English especially. And um, yeah, so I was not left alone with this challenge, but of course it was quite hard for me. And I, yeah, it took some time to get used to that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you feel it, it came good in the end? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I learned a lot from it and um, that also benefits me now, like for my future, for for example, writing my bachelor thesis or something like that. Mm. Well, that's good to hear. Yeah. In terms of your um, experiences in life, what would you say is the biggest life lesson that you've learned so far along the way? Mm. Um, I think I would say just that um, it is normal to struggle sometimes to have bad days, have negative emotions and nobody's happy all the time and there's like no perfect life and I think it's really rather about how you deal with that challenge and how you maybe can still find something positive as I mentioned with my gratitude journal for example just even on bad days you can find some nice things that happened and also if you just I think focus more on the present moment as well um, and not worrying too much about the future that you can't influence any ways um yeah i think that would be some life lessons i've learned yeah and does that connect with advice that you might give to students who are following in your footsteps yeah yeah i think what i mentioned about struggling and um you know that it's a part of human experience um that also means that you can always look for support and that it's not um, to be ashamed of something. So yeah, if you're struggling, look for help. There are lots of opportunities. And I think also just um, get involved as much as possible because yeah, I got so much from um, being part of the music society and also the Erasmus society and so on. And um, yeah, just sometimes you have to step out a bit of your comfort zone and just, go somewhere and try something new and then, yeah, it will benefit you in the end. That's great advice, thank you. And mm -hmm. so I wanted to ask you now, you've told us about your journey thus far, and we know you're um, still working on your studies in Germany, but what is your next destination? What are your future plans? Yeah, um, I think, as I already mentioned, my huge interest in music and in psychology as well. Um, what actually interests me the most is the combination of both. So the psychology of music, how music affects us, um, why does music touch us so deeply sometimes and questions like that. So I would really be happy to work and research in that field and um, I've already, for example, seen a, a master's program in London called Music, Mind and Brain, which is, I think, really perfect for me. So I think maybe I will go back to the UK <laughs> for oh, study. Great. And yeah, we will see where it takes me from there. <laughs> How exciting. Well, thank you, Lara, for sharing your journey to Kent and with us today. That's brilliant. Thank you very much indeed. Yeah, thank you for having me. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.